So, okay. So, hi everyone, and thank you for joining us. Today we welcome, welcome you to a CE3C Encontro Ciência, and we are very pleased to have as our uh, speaker, Noeline Safak, who I would like to thank in advance for being available to share her work with us. Um, you can ask questions during the talk uh, through the chat, or at the end, you can ask Noelin directly. Uh, we have some minutes for that. Um, you can, um, well, the conference will be recorded, so if anyone doesn't want to appear, just keep the video turned off, and then um, it will be available in, in our center's YouTube channel, so you can see it again or share it with someone else. Um, Noeline will be um, presented by Professor uh, Paul Borges, to whom I now give the floor. So thank you all. Thank you. Hola. Uh, thank you for everyone to join. Uh, Noeline Safak is uh, part of uh, a very important uh, project here in the Azores, the Life Beatles uh, project, uh, the, I think the first life project on Portugal on invertebrates. Uh, Noelin is the postdoc of the project and uh, uh, is uh, working within the Azorian Biodiversity Group, uh, led by uh, me uh, here to monitor the uh, habitat quality and habitat uh, change after uh, all the activities uh, that are being carried out during the, this life uh, project that is mostly improving the habitats uh, to uh, have better conditions for the survival of uh, the selected uh, insect species of these uh, life uh, beetle projects. Well, in uh, today, will present uh, some of the first results of uh, the project in which uh, we compared uh, native forests with uh, disturbed areas in Tercer Island uh, to see uh, if these uh, disturbed areas could have uh, some uh, relict populations of endemic uh, arthropods. I think this will be very interesting for everyone interested in habitat quality and uh, land use changes in uh, ecosystems. Thank you. I give the floor to Noelle. Thank you. I will uh, start uh, sharing my screen. Screen two, share, and then here. Okay. So thank you for the invitation, Patricia. I'm very glad uh, to be part of the CE3C uh, and to participate to these uh, science, science meetings in Control Science. Thank you for organizing this meeting. So my talk today is about the role of small lowland patches of exotic forests as refuges for rare endemic Azorian arthropod. I would like to take one minute to, for my background. I did my master's studies at the University of Lyon. It was about ecology and biometrics. I received a PhD in agroecology uh, with a thesis on uh, integrated pest management with landscape approaches at the School of Agronomy in Toulouse. Then I did a uh, postdoc, which were mainly teaching. In 2018, I flew to China where I did the postdoc. I investigated the local and uh, uh, landscape features of uh, insects in uh, arid uh, grassland. And now with Paolo, but also Teresa Ferrari, um, it has been one year that I'm as well, of course. I enjoy the, I enjoy the place. I work, my work is part of the life beetle. So the theme of my research are biodiversity conservation, landscape ecology, integrated pest management, but also ecological uh, modeling. The system that I, I investigated are agro systems, grasslands, and now islands, forests. I want to mention that this study is now online in a diversity journal. I did the paper with my dear colleagues, Simone Vatterini, Mario Barrel from, from the lab also, Francois Regal, who was a former postdoc of Paolo, 
but also Alejandra, Teresa, and uh, of course, uh, Paolo Poch, who is the head of the, of the lab. So before uh, starting really, I will uh, give some context of the, to, the, to the study. So the context. So now there is no doubt that uh, we know that biodiversity is on the brink. We also know that it is crashing. And yet biodiversity is important, very important to our life on earth. In support of the numerous studies which pointed biodiversity decline, the World Wide Foundation uh, in his um, last Living Planet report recorded a decline of about 68% um, in all uh, species, but also 49% on uh, butterflies, uh, butterfly species in um, European grassland. There is also a decline on arthropods. In German forests, Sebastian Siebold found that there are, there are wide, widespread decline in arthropod biomass, abundance, but also number of species in many trophic levels. Um, here you can see the, this um, uh, rank abundance curve. The decline are um, uh, highlighted in, uh, in, in yellow. We can see that the decline is, uh, affects mostly intermediate, intermediate species and species which are at the extreme. So here are the very abundant and here are the very high species. They seem to not be impacted. And uh, these uh, species are able to, are then able to compensate the, the decline in their abundance, which is typical of invasive species, but also of um, species um, of pest species. Several studies also reported a decline in uh, arthropod species. Among them, we have the study of uh, Pedro Cardozo and all, uh, which, uh, which is a very global one in, in insect extension. Uh, there is also this study by um, Sanchez Bayo and Wick, Why Wick, which predicted 40% extension of insect species over the next decade. And then from a completion of uh, recent studies, they found uh, an annual average of uh, an annual rate, an annual average rate of extension of about 2% uh, of, for Coleoptera, a little less for Immunoptera and a similar rate for Lepidoptera. And here they listed the major drivers of the decline. The first decline here is the intensive agriculture. It is also clear to scientists community that islands are not exception to the biodiversity crisis. In fact, uh, we all know that islands are um, oh, islands host a significant proportion of uh, the global biodiversity, but half of species which are listed treating in uh, the UECN, U UECN uh, list are insular species, and in this. Uh, last paper of uh, Paolo, but also uh, mostly um, Jose Fernandez Palacio, they found that 71% of, uh, um, of, of uh, arthropod, um, of insular arthropod, went extinct in the past. And then here, Costa Triantis and many members of our team. Um, before me, so with uh, Paolo, they calculated the extension depth for Azorian um, islands. The, st the extension depth is the measure of uh, species extension that will happen in the future as a result of the present impact or past impact. So they found dramatic results. More than half of species which evolve uh, in native forests or which, or, or which are dependent to, uh, to native forage may be driven to extension. This study also show that uh, endemic species will, uh, the study also show that endemic species were strongly related to the habitat. For instance, here, we can see that the proportion of native forests decreased from human arrival to, from, to today. So today is here. We only have a very highland uh, native forage, forage, forest. 
and so is the abundance of uh, endemic arthropods. So after all these bad news, the question is, what can we do to slow the decline? How can, how can we reduce the damages? So the lab, um, the IBC, IBBC lab now, which is part of uh, the large Azorian biodiversity group. Here are some research questions. The research question concern mostly biodiversity conservation. Unfortunately, Azores Islands are a good example to investigate the effect of alien arthropod species on um, the effect of alien arthropod on other, other species. In fact, exotic arthropod species are now to rep represent 60% of island um, arthropod species. And in a, recent, uh, in a recent publication, Paolo found that instead of a general decline, there is an increase of exotic species and a decline of uh, some, but very rare endemic, but for the moment, yes, the very rare endemic species. So I take the opportunity to define, to make clear what is endemic uh, species, to remember what, to recall what is endemic species. So endemic species are species that are restricted to a particular place. So endemic Azorian species are only found in Azores islands. And native species are restricted to a particular place, but they arrive naturally. And uh, in contrast, exotic species are non-native species. In the study, we call uh, them also introduced species. They are those introduced by human, whether accidentally or deliberately. So in this study, we investigated how abundance and diversity of endemic native and introduced species, how they are influenced by the type of forest. The studies was divided in three main tests. In the first, for the first point, we investigated the pattern of species richness, species variety, but also species dominance. And then we investigated the changes in diversity between the two types of forests. And finally, we quantify the importance of each site in supporting arthropod uh, species. We focus our study on four most abundant species. Sp spider here, but also uh, Coleoptera, Hemiptera, and uh, <laughs> Sucoptera. We address the following hypothesis. The first one is that endemic and native species should, should show high abundance and diversity in native forests than in uh, exotic forests. And then introduced species will show opposite pattern. And then our second hypothesis is that some dominant endemic and native species will find refuge in exotic forests, while some high competitor introduced species will be common in uh, native forests. And then the last one is that introduced species will show higher beta diversity between native and um, exotic forests, and also inside each type of, of forest. And for endemic and native uh, species, we will we predicted high beta diversity between the two type of forests, but also inside exotic forests, but a low beta diversity inside the uh, native forest. Okay, so this was the introduction. Then I yeah, will present uh, how uh, the material and the method uh, section. So this study was uh, carried out in Tercera, uh, which is, everyone know, I, um, I'm sure that here we all know where is Tercera, located in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean. So Tercera is part of the central group. But it is also the island with the largest native forest fragment. And they are all above five meter, um, they are all uh, at five meter above the sea level, like uh, uh, scientists uh, show. So, altogether, native forest fragment 
in uh, Tercera represent about the 6% of the island's area. And now they are part of the natural protected part, park. So um, Tercera also hosts uh, some, uh, some uh, host, uh, the most pristine forest fragment. We selected 50, 15 something points in uh, native forest and uh, 21 something point in uh, exotic forest. Here on the map, you can see the, the, the distribution of the different points. As I said early, we use a multi-taxonomic uh, approach, selecting four others, Arane, Coleoptera, Emitera, Socoptera. These orders, they provide uh, complementary information for conservation management, because they are different in their trophic ecology, but also in their dispersal ability. Um, they are, and therefore they play a very important role in the forest ecosystem. Uh, in addition, their ecology and taxonomy is very, very is well known in, uh, in Azores. Paulo almost know every species, uh, every arthropod species in, in, in Azores. Then specimens were sorted at the more four species and uh, I, they were identified to species level. Here, I, I take the opportunity to thank every, the numerous students which uh, we are working, who are working with uh, Paolo to sort them. So, and then each species was assigned to one of the three biogeographical bi category. So endemic, native, and introduced species. So to collect the specimen, we use the malaise trap slam, which is a passive uh, flight interse interception, interception trap. So this type of trap is suitable to, to sample mo mobile um, arthropod. So here, yeah, regarding uh, data analysis, we investigated species communities uh, on, uh, in, of the different type of forest. We use alpha diversity. So we use the, we use the hills number to characterize the alpha diversity. Hills number are um, very important. They are, they are a family of um, diversity indices, which differ among themselves only by one parameter. This parameter named Q uh, is very sensitive to the abundance of the, of the, of the species. Here, when Q is zero, the hill number is, uh, is called the, is, is, um, the Kao species richness. And when Q is one, the hill number is the Shannon diversity and uh, two, the, 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 Sim, the, the Simpson diversity, which is also uh, the dominant uh, diversity index. So we calculated alpha diversity at the forest level but also at each site level. We also calculated beta diversity on presence absence data using the Jacquard dissimilarity coefficient. We calculated the different component of, the, of beta diversity, the species replacement. This component expressed the change in diversity, which is due to species turnover. And uh, the second component of beta diversity is species richness. Uh, this uh, component expresses the change in diversity due to the differences uh, in the uh, number of species. It, it expresses an increase uh, in, in species in the, in the community. So we also calculated, uh, we then calculated beta diversity between the, the two types of forests, but also um, within um, uh, each type of forest. Ah, yes, we also, we also calculated the contribution of each site to species uh, diversity. Here, um, we calculated this index, the LCBD. Uh, high value of LCBD uh, indicates 
uh, sites which are um, very unique in species community composition. Okay, so now <laughs> this is very fast. I will show you the some some results. So first, here we have the overall uh, pattern. We collected about 17,000 um, 17, specimens and about 300 species. Most of specimens were bugs, accounting for six, uh, five, six, 50% of uh, the total abundance. And uh, mon most of species were beetle. They account for half of the number of, of species. And within introduced species, beetle were the most abundant, but also the most species, uh, the most species group. We also found that the diversity part and depend on the order, but also the type of forest and uh, the diversity index that we use. Here, um, so here we have a result of, of uh, for endemic species, for instance. Uh, within speeder um, species community, we found uh, the same pattern for the three diversity index. So here, the um, rare species, common species, and the dominant species have uh, the same pattern. More, more species in uh, native in the native forest than uh, in um, uh, exotic forest, and we found no difference in uh, between the two forests for beetle group, and opposite pattern for. Uh, bugs and book likes. So here I will not comment, but here we have the result for the three biogeography bio group. And here we also have a um, diversity pattern of uh, insight each um, um, uh, calculated insight each at this at the site le at, at the site level. So we calculated here the diversity pattern insight each site of each forest. So here the diversity pattern measure at the site level reveal that some variability between the site. Um, so here there are here are results for endemic species for beetles for um, speeder for instance we found a significant high value in native forest than in exotic forest and for bugs we found high significant diversity measure in uh, native forest for rare uh, species. This is uh, his number when Q is zero and no difference between uh, in a common and dominant species. Here are the complete uh, result for endemic species for the four orders. And here you have the complete result for native species here results are a little more ambivalent. For some others, there are more species in uh, exotic forest than in uh, native forest, like uh, some rare uh, coleoptera species. And for also for book flies here, from for the tree group, rare common and uh, dominant species, we have uh, more species in uh, native exotic forest than in uh, native forest. And here. You have the result for introduced species. So exotic forest, here we can, we can see that exotic forest is clearly the suitable environment for introduced species. Exotic bugs and book lice are very rare in, uh, in the native forest. So we analyze the change in the, of diversity between the two forests, but also inside each uh, each type of uh, in, in in but also in, uh, but also inside each forest. So we computed we also computed the main source of uh, diversity, the the species um, diversity due to species replacement, but also diversity due to species richness. The common pattern is that beta diversity value were higher among introduced species. You can see that well, here we have a higher uh, value of beta diversity. And uh, this in and that mostly they are mostly due to species uh, 
they are mostly due to differences in richness. But for endemic and native for, um, species, it depends on the taxonomy group. For instance, beta diversity in uh, endemic beetle here is due to richness, whereas while uh, in, it is due to both richness and replacement in uh, the speed group. So here we have uh, the result of changing diversity inside each type of forest, inside the, the native forest and inside the exotic forest. So here, how do sites inside forests contribute to this change in diversity? In other words, which sites support more species? So this was our question here. Um, we computed the, L, um, the LCBD to detect the importance of each site. For instance, you can see a result for speeder in the native forest. In blue here, um, site which are very important for endemic uh, species, and here in the orange site which are very, which are less important. You have a result here also for uh, exotic forests. So we have sites here which are not important for endemic species in exotic forests. And here you have the result for the two um, uh, forests and uh, for each order. Okay, after this result, I will give a little, uh, uh, we will discuss a little about the, uh, this result. Uh, so if I recall the hypothesis, the first hypothesis was about the global diversity. We predicted more endemic specimen and species in native forests and opposite pattern for exotic forests, uh, for exotic uh, species. And then in the second hypothesis, uh, this was about different group of species in the same community. So namely rare, common and dominant species. So we predicted that some dominant endemic species will find refuge in exotic forests, while some introduced species, which might be very uh, superior competitor, um, will be common in native forests. And here, we this third hypothesis is about is about the uh, beta diversity, so the change in diversity between the two forests. Let's start by the first hypothesis. As expected, we found that endemic species were more important, um, were, were more abundant in native forests than in exotic forests. In fact, uh, like uh, Trent is uh, described, native forests are the habitat, the uh, habitat the, the closest to pristine forest ecosystem of islands before human installation. Can this also describe uh, what is called forest dependent species? Uh, so forest dependent species are species, they are considered, a species is considered forest dependent when more than 85% of uh, the abundance is found, is collected in native forest. So most endemic species are then native forest dependent. They may be specialists um, of one or more endemic tree, like maybe um, Erica azoica or Juniperus brevifolia. This result support the previous finding uh, of these uh, studies. Here, contrary to our expectation, we found no difference in the number of species between native and exotic forests. We have three explanations here. The first is that those species, those endemic species that we found that were more um, abundant, uh, those species present in exotic forests, first explanation is that there are really population from before of deforestation, so before the change in land cover. Second, they might be generalist species, which can be found in, uh, in their host plant. Maybe they also have some host plant in exotic forest. Or uh, simply um, exotic forest might, be, might play the role of sink habitat for, for those endemic species. So these species are species 
widely distributed in lower elevation. Um, for instance, we have uh, this example of uh, the species of the genus Daphius, described by Paolo in 2017. Those species might be also species that survive uh, major extension. They are mostly small size, uh, sm small body size uh, species, like uh, Sophia Tezoplu described. The, those species might be also generalist uh, species. Here we have the example of the snood beetle that we found more uh, abundant in, uh, nat in uh, exotic forest than in, uh, in, in uh, native forest. So regarding introduced species, we found that they were more abundant and uh, species in uh, exotic than native forest. So the results support the finding of pedal calves also, but also uh, this study was in uh, Tessera and our results support also the findings of uh, Celine Major in Santa Maria. So ideally this will prevent native forest from invasion. But we also know that exotic species are associated with a certain intensity of land use. We can then expect that if native forests are conserved with their pristine forest feature, exotic uh, species will not success there. So the next session is about uh, our second hypothesis, which was about the um, different group of species rare species, common and dominant species. We predicted that some dominant species, uh, some dominant endemic species will find refuge in exotic forests and uh, some uh, introduced species, which are maybe high, uh, very strong competitor will find refuge in native forests. So here the hypothesis is validated for book lice endemic species. We found some endemic species of Scoptera order which were more abundant in exotic forest than in native forest. So this might be the fact that maybe these species, um, they switch their, their niches to exploit new trees, new vegetation in uh, exotic forest. And among beetle uh, speeder, we also found one endemic species, which was more abundant in exotic forest. But the hypothesis is not validated for introduced species. We found that rare, common, and dominant species were numerous in exotic forests than native forests. So, exotic uh, forests is uh, the is exotic uh, introduced species. Uh, they occupy the exotic forests and they spread easily from intensive managed land to forests. So, these results are in line with the, the, the work of Celine Major in Santa Maria where she found that the uh, Cryptomeria japonica forests, they were um, very um, suitable habitat for introduced species. So our last hypothesis here was um, about the change in diversity between the two forests, so beta diversity. So we predicted that introduced species uh, community will, be, will show high uh, beta diversity between the two forests but also inside, inside each forest. While for indigenous species, we predicted high beta diversity between the two um, forests, but inside exotic forests, but not inside the native forest. So here, um, first, I want to mention that the pattern of beta diversity can explain competition in, uh, can, can explain a competitive interaction so regarding introduced species, we found high beta diversity. So this suggests a negative interaction between uh, species. Negative is interaction like uh, competition um, for food, for, for place. And this might lead to exclusion. Most beta diversity was, uh, beta diversity was due to richness within introduced species. And this indicates that the local factor of the habitat uh, shaped introduced uh, species co uh, community. And those local factors favor the, uh, the arrival of new species. 
Regarding indigenous species, so endemic and uh, native species, we found low value of beta diversity. So this suggests a very low interaction. So endemic species might be specialized species or those species have a complementary niches. And um, most of um, beta diversity which was due to uh, replacement. So this is the last slide of the discussion. So the analysis here revealed two particular sites in a native forest, which were free of endemic uh, for of introduced species, whatever the, the, the taxonomy group. So this, these, two, these two sites might be a good example of resistance of invasion. We found one exotic uh, forest site which was important for bugs, and two sites here, important for book lice. So this was about the discussion. I have two last slides uh, with, uh, to, to conclude this uh, presentation. So our study records that recall that uh, native forest remnants are very important for the maintenance of endemic uh, species diversity. We also found that there is no simple solution. Even small and isolated exotic patches may play an important role in conservation of biodiversity. The study also addressed um, a high concern about the intensive agricultural matters and uh, the pressure to replace exotic forests with pastoral areas. So the paper is based on a one year data set, but I will not miss the recommendation section as uh, in every studies on biodiversity conservation. So our first recommendation is that uh, it's about the unprotected forest area, which are private here in Azorite. The study, this, uh, our studies uh, in line with um, other studies like uh, the, this one, the Capanoi all uh, 2019. Uh, this study called for investigation of on endemic species in uh, private areas. Our second recommendation is, the, is that using slam trap can add ABS in studies since slam is uh, suitable for highly mobile species, but uh, low, for, but, but not less suitable. I can say for low dispersal species species. Most of them are soil adapted species. So it would be important to, to implement long-term monitoring also on, um, on low dispersal species. So with using therefore different uh, type of a different type of, of trap. And finally, long-term monitoring program in Azores should, should also include uh, exotic forests as we saw that uh, there are some uh, sites of exotic forests were very important for, for endemic species. So uh, I would like to thank you for your, for your attention. <laughs> if you have a question, uh, I'm there. Thank you very much, Noeli. So yes, we have time for questions. Uh, congratulations for your, for your work and this presentation. Um, so let's see who wants to start. Ricardo. So ideas. Oh, Ricardo, yes. Hello, Noeline. Congrats. First of all, congratulations on your presentation. Uh, I would just like to make a quick question regarding the, you said that you classified the arthropods into rare and common species, right? Mm. As the VR analysis. Uh, go ahead with your question and maybe okay. I will. Uh... Uh, my, my question was, what was the criteria to distinguish the rare species that you employed? Ah, uh, we didn't classify them into rare, common and uh, dominant species, but when we calculated the hill numbers, uh, when you have the, you calculate the hill numbers with Q uh, equal zero, so the cow richness, um, this, as I said, 
these numbers are very sensitive to the abundance of species. So in the mathematical uh, formula of um, um, uh, when Q, of Hill number when Q equal, uh, equal zero, uh, the prevalence is given to rare species. So when you are comparing, um, when you are analyzing uh, diversity using uh, Q equal zero, uh, it is like you are comparing mostly rare species. I'm not sure if I'm clear. And when you, we are, you are analyzing um, Hill numbers, so diversity with uh, the Shannon diversity, you consider that your community is mostly common species. And when you are using the Q equal two, so the dominance uh, uh, Simpson diversity, you can consider that your community is mostly dominant species. Oh, I see. I see what you mean. We okay. didn't we didn't select it in advance, as in uh, we didn't sort them in uh, in the lab, uh, but it is in the the Hill number formula. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So. Uh, so to complement uh, your mm -hmm. the question of Ricardo, uh, in practice. Uh, we can have done also some uh, uh, classification of rare and common species and analyze in a different way. But uh, in practice, uh, uh, when you calculate the hill number zero, that is number of species, uh, of course, you are computing mostly the all the community that have most of them are rare species. And of course, it is in, in, in this way, we we uh, we can use the hill numbers to to differentiate the uh, the whole community with Shannon, the median and high abundant species uh, diversity, and with uh, uh, inverse Simpson, the we uh, in practice are computing the influence of the two or three dominant species is, uh, in this way. Is an indirect way to to do that. Yes, but we can also use a rank model, a rank uh, abundance uh, model, or also a species abundance uh, distribution to investigate maybe only rare species, common or intermediate species. Yeah, but it, we it is only made, mathematical. Yeah, we didn't make that in this uh, manner. In the lab, no, no. Okay, ah, Mario. Mario, Mario. <laughs> Hello, have a good day. Thank Mario you is the co author of the paper, so <laughs> he knows Thank better. you for your presentation, it was really nice. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to make two questions, probably they are very simple. One of them is uh, besides finding the endemic species uh, in the exotic forests, are you aware if these species have stable populations or if they are in decline, if these species are paying the extinction debt? Um, or probably do not have temporal data to, to know if these species occur in the exotic forests and they are in decline. Uh, but this is one of the questions. The other is, you study, you made the study in Terceira. Do you think that the other islands of the Azores have the same kind of uh, pattern or it will be a bit different? Um, so uh, for the... The first question, so about the extension and uh, decline, are they declining or is there any extension? I didn't calculate that, so I can't say that for today, but from the former studies like uh, Triantis, uh, who calculated the extension depth, but also the one of, of Paolo paper that I cited, so they found some decline uh, in um, not very, I don't have the statistic in uh, in mind now, but not very high decline, uh, not general, general decline, but decline in uh, some uh, rare endemic species, but a very an increase on uh, introduced species. With the but it was in native forests. We don't have temporal data for exotic forests. Mm -hmm. Therefore, in practice, nobody can answer your question, Marie. It's, uh, it's uh, something that uh, we can. We have already slump traps 
<clears throat> in uh, exotic forests that Noelin studied um, uh, since uh, 2019. Therefore, we have data from two, three years, mm -hmm. but we but this material is not uh, identified or sorted, and we need more years to to do that. This is something that uh, in future in eight, nine years, probably, if we have energy to keep uh, doing this work, uh, we can answer your question. Therefore, we post <laughs> your question to eight years in future. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, regarding the other islands, uh, what can we say? Um, we, we, we have also not have real a... uh, good data in as yes. We have uh, Piku, we are starting having six years time series for peak island but uh, not yet analyzed in a complete way but Pico is probably and now with life beetles projects flores island we will have also a, a kind of time series but again it, we will know to answer your questions probably only in four or five years time Um, is there any other question? Okay, so um Nuelin, the, the 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 well the talk will be will still be available through YouTube. So if you have any other question that you want to ask Nuelin. Uh, I, I believe in uh, any other idea for her work. I believe that uh, she's able to, to answer through email or, or other mm -hmm. way. Yes. So thank you very much. Thank you, Noelin. Thank you mm -hmm. all for your participation. Uh, I hope to see you next week in the next Encontro Ciencia. And ah, uh, there is one question. I from, guess, uh, no, Marta is clapping. Last Marta, week so. I also <laughs> make a mistake with that is clapping thank you noelin thank you very very much congratulations thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. bye let's try